Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm Kevin Tungs from the North America Go-To-Market team. Uh, very excited for this next presentation uh, about Fuse 8 and really getting into that pathway to move from our integration components to uh, where that modernized space is. So I'd like to welcome my good friends, Sergio and Michael, and really excited to hear you guys' presentation today. Sergio, let me hand it over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. So yes, let's see the, the agenda. This is the breakdown of the, the agenda that we have prepared for today's session. The, the first uh, topic is what happens with a few sites. Uh, we, we are going to explain the reasons that uh, we uh, rebranded the, the name. Also, we are going to give you some reasons if you are using now few six and seven, uh, why you should migrate to uh, latest version of Camel. And uh, we are going to uh, give you some uh, information about how to migrate uh, your few six, seven uh, uh, to, to, to the last uh, Rahat build of Camel. And uh, the, the last uh, topic is, is a live demo that uh, we are going to show you uh, is uh, how um, a service uh, made in the few six OGI, how migrate this service to uh, Camel on Quarkus. So uh, let's jump for the next uh, uh, topic. Okay, that is what's next after Fuse 7. So uh, if uh, so, the story uh, began in, in 2007. Uh, a group of engineers from Active MQ uh, uh, Open Source Project uh, decided to create a, a camel in order to implement uh, enterprise integration patterns. Uh, these are the results of uh, uh, a study that uh, observe the communications between services and, and systems in, in IT, and uh, they uh, determined uh, that all communications between uh, services uh, can be um, uh, defined in one or um, many integration patterns. They uh, define a list of uh, roughly uh, 60 patterns, and uh, the idea is to reuse when you need to make, uh, make a, uh, an integration, is reuse all of these uh, uh, patterns. So uh, and that it was the, 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 the beginning of uh, Apache Camel uh, um, a project. And uh, behind of this uh, project, uh, it uh, was uh, a company, it was uh, Fuse uh, Source. Uh, this company was acquired in 2012 by Red Hat. And one year later, um, Fuse 6 uh, came out. Uh, Fuse 6 uh, was based on the Camel 2 and, uh, and supported it, uh, uh, OGI and Java uh, to EE uh, architectures. And um, if you don't remember, that was the, the time that uh, the, the, of enterprise service buses uh, platform. So, so the, the, uh, in that time, the, all the integrations uh, the, uh, were recommended to uh, uh, centralize all, all the policies, uh, governance, and, and services on, on that. And uh, the applications uh, were uh, made uh, based on the uh, three the entire uh, uh, architecture uh, that uh, now uh, that uh, literature we call as a uh, monolithic. In 2018, the Fuse uh, 7 uh, was released and um, we continue supporting OGI and uh, Java 2E and uh, we include uh, capabilities for managing uh, microservices. Also, we uh, started to support uh, Spring Boot. And the idea was that in, in 2022, uh, this uh, Fuse 8, uh, that, that is, uh, is the new uh, release of, of Fuse, uh, is uh, based on Camel 3 and uh, microservices and, and cloud and designed for uh, cloud native. And um, what happens with the, that uh, Fuse 8? So, uh, Michael, uh, can you move? 
So the uh, what uh, the, the, that happened was that the fuse eight uh, was rerun uh, to uh, Camel, uh, indeed the uh, Rahat built of Apache Camel. And uh, the why the, the main reason is because uh, the upstream project uh, Apache Camel is, is very popular and, and is uh, we need to leverage that uh, that popularity and um, the also in in is one that is, is an important thing because uh, as probably you know um, um, Apache Camel in terms of contributions is the is the is the most uh, uh, popular um, uh, integration framework in the open Social community, and, um, and 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 this is something that uh, that you can take advantage if you use it. And uh, the, in, the, in this Red Hat Camel, uh, we uh, include uh, three different uh, flavors. Uh, the the Camel Core remains the same for those three uh, flavors. And uh, what uh, we give you is uh, the option to simplify the 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 implementation of, uh, of Camel at uh, depending on the requir requirements that you have. We provide uh, Camel extensions for Quarkus and uh, that is the, the, the support of uh, uh, Camel if you uh, want to uh, leverage the um, Quarkus uh, uh, runtimes and that, that, that provides you that um, um, uh, high performance and, uh, and, uh, uh, and the low uh, footprint. And uh, if you um, want to uh, use um, the integration services in, in OpenShift, you can uh, use Camel K, and that uh, is a way to, uh, with very low code, uh, uh, allow you to deploy it and, um, and define integrations uh, on, on OpenShift. And uh, also, we provide support for uh, Camel. Uh, and, and, and the runtime is uh, Spring Boot. And um, one important thing here is that um, the, uh, the the Camel interfaces remain the same from the beginning. So that is is a um, is a benefit uh, if, if you want to uh, migrate from one version to the other version, because if you, for instance, take uh, at the getting a started guide that uh, that was. Uh, release in in 2007, uh, and and you take a look at today, you will see that uh, the 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 DSL, the the objects like current processor and uh, and camera root, uh, remain particularly the same. So that that is a benefit if you want to to migrate. Uh, move the slide, please. Yes, and why uh, migrated to Red Hat Camel? The uh, some reasons for migrating uh, from uh, Fuse six seven. Are aside of the supportability, that uh, this is uh, something that we always recommend that if you uh, put this code in production, that should be uh, supported. Is the is the security? The security we have added uh, this security uh, uh, patches on uh, on the the upstream project. Also, we support uh, in the 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 image of uh, uh, for Camel on. On, on, on deployed on, on OpenShift, that, that that image is has uh, uh, installed all the security patches on the on, on that uh, uh, from the operating system, and um, another uh, reason is the modernization. As uh, you saw uh, before, uh, uh, few six and seven uh, were. Was what they they they, they were um, uh, focus on the um, um, OGI and uh, and Java 2E uh, architectures, and um, now uh, probably you are doing a, a process or a project for modernize your your monolithic applications, and, and and that happens the same with the integration frameworks that uh, that is is important. Uh, to 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 have is a is a is a more uh, integration framework, and um, another reason is the distributed the integration. To the the uh, the requirements for an integration tool um, has been changed. Uh, um, now we need to uh, uh, provide that integration tool uh, its uh, capabilities uh, of uh, integrating legacy systems and also uh, new one uh, systems and services. The services has. has been changed 
and, um, and it's important that uh, the integration services must be uh, close uh, where the services that you want to integrate uh, are deployed. And if now the, the you you can deploy these services on different clouds and and the platforms, and that is the one of the um, of the key values of the the, the new um, uh, Red Hat Camel. And uh, the other reason is that uh, the, the Red Hat Camel is a, is a cloud native uh, uh, integration framework. Uh, and uh, that is, is important because uh, you can leverage the, the, the scalability and the, and the facility that gives you that uh, that uh, this this product has been uh, designed uh, for, for that. So it, that is agnostic in terms of infrastructure. And if uh, you, um, uh, Michael, uh, can you move the, the slide, please? And drilling down into this um, uh, idea, uh, that uh, what does mean uh, a cloud native uh, the application? So um, uh, Red Hat Camel uh, followed all of these principles that uh, they based on, uh, on services, uh, uh, architecture. Is also you are able to to package the the all the integration services uh, as a containers. It is uh, capable of uh, deployed in different or in the distributed uh, platforms and um, independent of the cloud provider. And, and very, very important is that uh, that you are able to integrate uh, the lifecycle of uh, all of these components in your current uh, applications lifecycle. And, and here is the, the, the very good point because um, the, the, uh, you, you are able to use uh, is the, if you are implementing for instance, a GitHub uh, uh, strategy in your your company, all the all the code uh, can be uh, stored in the in Git repository. Can be deployed on your uh, Kubernetes platform or OpenShift uh, platform. And uh, next slide, please. And also, it's important that uh, the uh, Red Hat Camel uh, has uh, been designed to, to integrate uh, tightly with uh, uh, OpenShift and leverage the Red Hat ecosystems. Um, Red Hat Camel is not a lot in, in, the, in the world, so you need uh, some other uh, uh, capabilities and functionality in order to run your um, uh, um, applications. And um, the um, uh, Red Hat Camel uh, provides integration with uh, 3Scale, with Apicurio uh, Service Registry. It integrates with uh, Prometheus uh, and, uh, and the distributed tracing in order to um, uh, retrieve uh, information about uh, open telemetry. And um, it also uh, is integrated with uh, uh, OpenShift. So, ne next slide, please. And uh, in, an e in addition, you can um, leverage the, the integration with uh, uh, serverless. That uh, that is is very important, and uh, and 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 can impact in your uh, in your cloud provided billing. Uh, because um, uh, that is the capability that uh, allows you to reduce to zero the the resources that uh, are running integration. Uh, uh, services uh, when no system is is calling them. So that uh, that is a, a very interesting feature, and uh, and 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 uh, this is uh, that uh, that something that you can leverage with uh, Red Hat Camel. So, um, Michael, I'm going to hand over to you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so now I would like to to discuss a little bit about how, well, wait, how to migrate. Because um, okay, on one hand we can be very excited by ex experimenting and taking benefit of uh, from the, the the new modern distributed serverless integration framework, but we still have to go through this migration process. And if you are running, uh, for example, Fuse 6, which is now a little bit behind, that's an activity, a migration that can be a bit scary because there will be, we can expect, we can anticipate changes at multiple levels, like the OSGI, for example, if you were using Fuse 6 on OSGI, is going to, to, to change 
even the OpenJDK is going to change with an impact on some libraries like JXB. Uh, Cara for Fabric will be translated into um, something else. Could be Kubernetes. Could be could, could be could be another platform. And at the Camel layer, we 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 just saw that Camel was upgraded uh, from version two to version three. So th this could be this could be a bit scary. Uh, but and indeed, if we if we break down uh, the different activities that this migration can uh, can lead to, well, we we have impact really in concrete impact everywhere. So for the JDK, I said the JXB uh, is no longer, with the migration of the Open JDK, the JXB is no longer in the, in the Java core, so we, we need to, to add it as, a, as an explicit dependency. If we were using OSGI, well, things like features lists, they have to become Maven dependencies on the platform. If I want to migrate from Fuse 6 to something running on Kubernetes, I need to, to think about the best practices on such a platform. So best practices around containerization, like relaying on config maps, relaying on a health check and uh, things like that. And on, on the camel side, well, if, if I was using, for example, Blueprint XML, which was very common uh, with uh, Fuse 6, well, I will have changes in the XML because the namespaces are not the same. The structure of the XML is not blueprint anymore. Uh, then there are uh, differences in the, the, the way the, the modules are, are compiled. Uh, some components have been renamed and some components has, has been, uh, have been deprecated. So uh, actually, we, we thought about, uh, about how to make it easier for the people being in few six and few seven to go to the Reddit build of Camel. So we, we, we started to, to think and we took a, a community uh, initiative and the, the, the thinking was, okay, if I want to do, if I wanted to do this migration, what would I like, what would like it to be? And we thought that, well, basically I want it to be limited to the only thing that I absolutely have to change. Like for example, the component being renamed, okay, I can take care of that. It's not going to be a big deal. The functionalities are the same. It's just the naming that changed. So I, I, I can translate that very easily. Deprecated components, yeah, okay. If I was using XML JSON, I have multiple possibilities to, to work around that. I need to choose one, the best for me. I can take care of that. However, changes in the platform, changes in the runtime, changes in the open GDK, I don't really want to take care of those changes. I, I would like something to, to do that for me. And so we, we took the initiative to create uh, some templates uh, for Spring Boot and for, for Spring Boot, for Quarkus and for CamelK that would actually abstract all the technical details and what and the migration hopefully will be reduced to just the the things, the functional things that are mandatory to, to, to change, like the name of some components and the deprecated components. And so at the end, what I would like the uh, migration to be is that I would like to have a, a kind of a framework. I just need to port my Camel application onto that, flame, that, that framework, the one that I choose, the Spring Boot one, the Quarkus one, or the Camel K one. And when it's done, I will just have to take care about a few things like what is deprecated and there, there is a very limited uh, number of components that have been uh, deprecated. Okay, so I think the best is that I try to show you. Um, so let me uh, try to show you what it looks like. So uh, the templates are in this... Um, GitHub repository, uh, so it's totally public. You can uh, uh, go there, you can contribute, you can uh, feel free to, to, to have a look. So you will have a, um, a directory called templates where the templates are. They are sorted by application type. So there is REST, REST type of application, so uh, HTTP or AMQ, uh, very typical uh, kind of applications. Um, you will also find all the uh, instructions to migrate those to port uh, an application to to those uh, each of each type of application to to the to the uh, the latest version of uh, the Red Hat build of Camel. Um, 
there are a few examples of application also in the in the repository and uh, what i would like to try to do with you now is to take a, a rest api implemented in fuse 6 so that's going to be something like a blueprint xml osgi um, uh, api implemented with uh, um, uh, CXFRS, which was the library at that time, which doesn't exist anymore. So indeed, the the, the, the migration uh, needs to needs to be performed there. Uh, and I would like to try to to migrate it with you with the templates. I will do it manually. You will see that it's easily um, easily uh, can be easily automated. I'm gonna do it do the, the the migration manually so that you have a feeling of what it would uh, look like and what what the what the effort is with the templates. Um, I've already downloaded the uh, templates and the application. I've put everything into the same directory so that I'm gonna use this uh, this uh, VS code to migrate. And uh, I put everything into the same uh, directory. So we have uh, well, the, the two templates, the Quarkus one, the Spring Boot one, the KamelK one, and the claim demo is the uh, is the Fuse 6, Fuse 6 application that we will migrate. Uh, everything is visible here, so that will be very handy to perform the migration. So the the source application runs on the uh, uh, good old Fuse Fabric 6.3, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I've just launched a, a Fuse Fabric with Podman in a local Docker container here. And uh, what uh, it's a REST API, so what it looks like is is that. So if you've been using Fuse 6, you recognize the port 8182, very, very common for a Fuse fabric. Uh, and the CXF uh, prefix, which was also very common for every kind of application um, implemented with CXF. You will see here that there are two times the status in the URI. Uh, and actually it's on purpose. We will, we, we will consider that this is the kind of mistake that we want to correct as part of the migration. And we will see here that thanks to the new way to deploy REST API with Camel, with Camel 3, uh, that's something that is very easily and transparently uh, modifiable um, uh, with simply with an open API spec. So uh, this is an example of uh, the, the response that it gives. So it just gives some information about a claim that has been raised by, uh, I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit so that you can see what this okay so it just gives some information about uh, about a claim that has been raised okay? so let's try this is a few six application let's try to migrate it as fast as possible to either quarkus or spring boot and what i propose is that we do quarkus and spring boot at the same time because the purpose of the template is to abstract that so that should be should be very very easy to do both okay, i'm gonna zoom in a little bit here as well so there are a few steps. There's no specific order. We just need to complete all the steps for the migration to be to be to be finished. Um, so we can start, for example, by the configuration. Um, so let me try to zoom in a little bit. I'm not exactly sure how I can zoom in here, but maybe once it's in on the on the right, it will be uh, clear. Um, In a fuse fabric, you had this concept of pit properties, right? So the, 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 the properties were externalized into, into a pit file. Uh, you just need to take that, the content, the full content of your, your pit file, and you place it in the respective application properties of the two templates. So here, for example, uh, this, this one is the CEQ's camel extension for Quarkus. So this one is the Quarkus one. I'm just copying, at the end of the file, I'm copying everything that is in the pit properties. And I do the same for Spring Boot. Same location. At the end of the file, I just place all the variables that I want to use. And so that's done for the, for the configuration. I need to migrate the root, of course, that's the core of the application. So the blueprint OSGI is something uh, that looks like that. So here, what is important is that you take only the root part. You don't take everything. You don't take the camel context. You don't take the whole file. You just take the bare minimum, which is the root, right? The logic. 
and you migrate it to the um, you, you place it to the the placeholder which is in camel there is an xml file here you just replace the placeholder with your root you do that for quarkers you do that on spring boot is the same okay now if you look at the root you see that it uses a, a custom processor this is something very very common uh, in uh, in camel to have a, a external uh, external processor written in java so uh, first thing of course is that you need to import the java package very easy you just take the full package and you place it into the java folder for both quarkers and spring boot yeah. Uh, now, if you rem remember in um, Blueprint OSGI, you had to actually declare, well, register the uh, custom processor into the bin registry, which was in the outside the, outside the camel context here um, in, with, with, the, with, with this line. Uh, here, there is a slight difference between the two templates because this actually is totally uh, screen compatible. So if you are on Spring Boot, you have a, a file, a placeholder of almost the same same type of file, and you just need to play the exact same line there. Um, this format, this beans file, actually doesn't really exist for Quarkus. So with Quarkus, you actually have to use annotation. So that's a, a little manual process here. You need to use annotation to do the same thing in Quarkus. Let's pay attention to the name. Well, the bean ID actually. All right. So we've migrated uh, the root, but the root, let me take back the uh, blueprint XML. It's an API, right? So it was implemented with CXFRS library. Doesn't exist anymore in Camel 3. Uh, now the best way, the recommended way to define API is to use the Camel. Um, the camel uh, rest component and with the camel rest dsl as well uh, if you use the rest dsl you have a, a separation of concern that is very nice so you have the implementation in one place which is the camel root and you have the definition of the api of the api in another place in another file so you can do the management and the governance of the api with a, a more flexible way um, so how does it work well that's quite easy the only thing you, you need is the uh, open api spec of your uh, api it's a very good practice to always have uh, the uh, open api spec of all your apis so if you don't have an, them uh, i would consider that maybe this is a, a prerequisite for the migration to have proper uh, open api that will help a lot after the migration to apply global governance api management and so on over the api so I actually created this one because it didn't exist for this particular few six applications. So I create, created it with uh, Epicurio API Designer and I exported it as a YAML file as yet. So all templates, both templates have a Maven plugin to generate, um, to generate the, the, the camel code that you need for REST API based on Open API spec. So the only thing you need to do is that you place your, your Open API spec into, I'm gonna take, for example, the Quarkus one into the source main spec folder. And then you can immediately go and use the, use the Maven plugin. So if you use Maven, Camel, REST DSL open API and then the goal would be generate XML. If you are if you prefer to work in Java, you can generate in Java as well. But starting from a blueprint XML, it makes sense to keep using uh, XML. So once uh, it's done, you should find in target generated uh, an XML file with the exact representation in Camel of a REST API. So you just take that and you place that in the placeholder, uh, which is the rest.xml file for both templates. So you just put it there. Yeah. And for Spring Boot, that's exactly the same location, same file, you place it here. Now, how does the link, how does it work? 
I mean, how, how is it working from the REST um, definition and the REST implementation? Well, it's by the operation ID, which is just here and comes from the Open API spec. So you just take the ID, you go to your root, and you replace the CXF line with the operation ID. And you can do that both in Quarkus and Spring Boot. Yep. And that's pretty much it. Uh, there is one more thing that you might want to do, and that depends on uh, what would be the clients of your the, the clients of your API after the migration? Because if your client applications were already CXF based application, you might have this in your application, like uh, the operation name. It's a requirement. It, it's something used by the CXF framework. So you might have this operation name in the in the header and to actually to help know which Java um, which uh, Java method to call and, and things like that. So if you want your application to be compatible with new clients, which are not CXF, you need to kind of remove it. So best way to meet, well, the good way to remove it is to actually clean, clean up your file. Well, there is a very easy way to remove it is you do something like that. And that works as well, right? So you can do that like that in both. And that would do the job. Uh, one thing that you can clean up as well, just because uh, we removed the dependency to CXFRS, so the Java API, the, the Java version of the API that was used by the CXFRS server, you can you can actually remove that. As well. And you can do that for both Spring Boot and Quarkus. And normally, you're good to go. So let's give it a try. So this one is the Quarkus one. So if I do um, in Quarkus... Hopefully, if I haven't forgotten anything, it should give something. Okay, so if I go back to my REST API, and it's it so the it makes the, the migration transparent. So it's gonna it actually maps the the, the new application to the same port, and it keeps the prefix the CXF prefix. We just decided, thanks to the open API spec, that we would simplify and, uh, and restore the, the, the API to the, to, to, the, the, to the one with only one status. So if I do that, in theory, I should um, mm, not found. Sorry. So what did I? What did I? Um, oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Sorry. Uh, I need actually to exit from my um, fabric because it keeps my port 8182 uh, busy. So the application couldn't actually go to this port. So let me just restart it. Now it should have taken the port. So if I go there now, I should have the same response as before. And we are, uh, we are already running uh, on Quarkus. Uh, should do the same for Spring Boot, so just in case uh, we want to be sure if I do that here. I should also have my application already migrated on Spring Boot. Same thing, it makes it transparent, so URL would be with 8182.6f, you can change that very easily with the application the properties but otherwise if i put this one i have the same answer already and i'm on spring boot okay um so another thing that i want you to to know is that the templates are made so that you can run the application on vm if you want to stay on vm but the application is already ready to be containerized. So if you want to have the, your application on OpenShift, you just do a Maven install and you activate the OpenShift profile. The template already takes care of creating everything that needs to be created. So which means uh, the service, the root, the config map, the everything. Something that I forgot to mention, we just saw it. The templates already, uh, the templates have uh, unit and integration tests included. 
um, just to accelerate the life cycle. So that will take a couple of minutes. So the, it's a, a Nest2i build that is started, started by the template. If I go, actually, I have my um, I have my uh, my uh, OpenShift running here, uh, so we see that the build is already is already starting, is already running. Um, so the templates make the application ready for OpenShift. It makes also the application ready for CamelK. If you want to run it as a function, you can run it as a function as well. Uh, so I'm not sure I still have time to show that to you. Maybe, maybe do I? Um, yeah, let's try. So if you want to make it to deploy it on CamelK, that's even easier because for CamelK, the application is just that, the XML with the root. If you have uh, a custom processor, that will be tre treated as a simple Java dependency. How do you make a Java dependency? You put it in a Maven project, you export your Maven project into Nexus. So let me show that to you. Uh, and this is because this format, we take the root. Remember, we didn't take the camel context. It makes it automatically compatible with camel K. So, uh, so for this, this application, so on OpenShift is uh, almost ready. Uh, we're going to test that just after. Let's take a care of camel K now. Uh, so if you want to deploy the, your application to CamelK, you need to have your processor as a dependency. So very easy. You take your Java folder. Yep, it's here. There is um, an empty Maven project in the CamelK template, which is called Java dependency. So you can use it. You just put it in source, main Java. You put your file. Uh, this one, I don't need it. Yep. And you just need to make sure in the pom.xml that you have the, the root to your Nexus correct. Uh, I have deployed the Nexus here. Uh, so I just need to take the root so that it's correct. I'm going to put it here. And yeah. So here, there's nothing, um, nothing specific. It's just a simple dependency um, that you put into Nexus. So if you do modern deploy, it should put your your dependency uh, directly into into your server. Um, so if I go back here, oops, not this one. Oops, sorry, the release one. Yep, dependency is arrived here, uh, and then. To run your application on CamelK, that's just one line. But there is just one thing that I need to do, because in this version, it's an old version of uh, CamelK on my server. It's a 1.8. I think we are at 1.12 now. Um, it just as it, it creates the um, properties, all the properties. It makes it in the pom.xml that it generates. So I just need to um, make sure that the application that I want to deploy doesn't have special character. And so I'm going to just comment those line because the person sign is going to, um, to trouble a bit the, the process. Otherwise, the only, the only thing that you, you have to do now is to uh, Reference the bean that you want to use as a processor. That's very easily done. It's a Java file. So you import. Well, you just need to add, to have your bean with the bind to registry thing. So, and I, so I'm putting bind to registry. I put the bean ID the same as before. And I just need to instantiate this bean so that it will be in the there will be an instance in the registry and the package if i'm not mistaken is this one yep be good all right 
And that's it. If I now do something like, yep, not this. This, so camera run, and then I just pass my XML, uh, and I add my dependency here. I will have my my uh, few six application deployed to uh, to OpenShift as a function instead as as a pod. Uh, I'm running out, out of time, I think, um, but we can see if we look at the pod here, the, so the, the application that is deployed as a standard pod has been uh, created here. There is a, a, the template created a service, it created a route, it created everything. So in theory, if I take this and I replace that part by my route, my OpenShift route, I will also retrieve my response and we will see in a few seconds that my um, camel k application is building and in uh, like five seconds from now we should see this to be ready and uh, we well just to, to show you that in in a few steps you can go from few six to quarkus or spring boot on vm or on openshift or on serverless. So it should be recreating the container now. So now it's the, it's a camel k uh, it's a camel k function now. Uh, should have a root. Yeah, and actually I'm gonna just replace this part. So sorry, I've been a bit quick, but just to show you now now this is the function that is actually returning. Awesome. Okay, a little bit out of time. Uh, sorry for that. <laughs> I, I had to. I had to go very fast. Limited time, but you can see that in a less than a half an hour, I could have a, a few six application on CamelK thanks to the template. That is fantastic, you guys. That was an awesome presentation, Michael Sergio. Thank you very much for such a great run through. There was one question that came in. Let's just hit it really, really fast. Uh, looks like it, it. Would you say that it's the same amount of effort? for Spring Boot as for Quarkus. The demo seems to suggest so, so they could skip Spring Boot if they wanted to and just go to Quarkus if that was their 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 goal. Is that is that a fair statement, guys? Yeah, I, I would say that, um, so so Quarkus is, uh, is, uh, is probably a, a, a better runtime if, if your target is uh, a serverless uh, framework and a function, function as a service framework. Yep. Now, if you, if you start from Spring Boot already, okay, that makes sense that maybe you stay on Spring Boot because you have all that knowledge. I would say that if you start from anything else, any SGI, Caraf, things like that, targeting Quarkus is probably a little bit better. The effort is exactly the same as targeting Spring Boot. That is perfect. Well, I hope that gets your question in. That was a fantastic question. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you again, Michael and Sergio. And... Good luck with the rest of the sessions. Thanks.